When you descend into the valleys of Yellowstone, it can seem like a very peaceful world. But deep under these mountains, rivers, and forests is one of the largest and most destructive volcanic forces on the planet, a giant plume of rising magma known as the Yellowstone Hotspot. For the past two million years, this supervolcano has been responsible for catastrophic eruptions so powerful they've covered much of the continent with ash. But it's also what has given birth to many of the wonders of Yellowstone's landscape. In 1870, one man suddenly found himself lost and all alone in this forbidding world. His name was Truman Everts, and he was anything but a mountain man. He had been the internal revenue officer for Montana, but was unemployed when he got the chance to take part in the first major expedition into the Yellowstone region on horseback. What happened to him here would soon be a warning to others about the risks of exploring this remote volcanic land. It all began in thick forests on the south side of Yellowstone Lake when Everts somehow got separated from his fellow explorers. Soon after, his horse bolted along with almost all of his supplies and his gun. By nightfall, he was completely alone in this wild landscape of lakes and trees. All he had left was a couple of knives, an opera glass, and the clothes on his back. Over the coming days, his fruitless search for his companions brought him to this river and the shores of Hart Lake. This is still one of the most remote areas of Yellowstone National Park today. Everts spent most of one night high up in a tree, trying to escape a hungry mountain lion that growled and paced the earth below him. In the days that followed, he suffered a remarkable series of misfortunes. He managed to lose both his knives. Not far from the lake, he slept near some thermal pools to stay warm. But one night, in his sleep, he rolled onto a steaming vent and scalded one of his hips. He even escaped a raging forest fire that he had started himself by accident and had burned off much of his hair. Every day, he got more and more delirious, and old friends started speaking to him. One of these phantom companions encouraged him to forge on until he reached the Yellowstone River. It was on his 37th day alone in the wilderness that Everts suddenly heard a voice calling his name. It was a bounty hunter known as Yellowstone Jack. When Everts was finally rescued, he weighed just 90 pounds and was what one man later described as nothing but a shadow. At first, he was mistaken for a small, mangy bear. Everts published an account of his survival, which he called 37 Days of Peril. Some questioned how much of it was true, but it succeeded in painting a picture of Yellowstone as a strange and frightening place, which only inspired others to want to come and see it for themselves. 